Hello everyone and welcome to this scan to cad Pro video. In this video, we're going to be demonstrating some of the different entities that we can extract based on the mesh geometry and some of the different parameters and settings we can adjust to control precisely how those entities are going to be created, which will ultimately help us in the design process of our part. So the list of entities that we can extract are all listed over in this tool tip here. And let's start off with something basic like a plane. So I'm going to select that there. And I'm going to just go and fit that right onto this bottom surface here. So I'm going to hold control, click on that surface, and immediately it's able to find all the points that conform to the same similar flat surface as the point as I clicked on. So you'll notice that it's immediately filtered out these raised bumps and decals and other sort of details that we don't need. So if I wanted to, let's say, consider more of the surface, then I can increase the selection tolerance slider here. And you'll notice that that has also increased the number of uh, selected triangles. And I can drop it down to reduce the number of selected triangles to create this plane. I can also adjust the size of this plane by using the interactive gizmo here. So dragging these points around. I can also translate it up and down, left and right, and rotate it respectively. And that's also controlled right over here in the parameters section. So let's say I want this to be a perfect 100 and 100 here. And let's make the rotation back to zero. Okay. So now that I have that in place, let's go through a couple other settings here. So you'll notice that some of these selected triangles are showing up in this magenta color. This shows me that these are the worst fitting points that I have on my mesh. So if I drop this down to zero, You'll notice that this shows me that this is the de highest deviation based on the severity of the colors, according to the scale here. So if I wanted to remove that from skewing the calculation of my flat plane, I can set a percentage to eliminate that possibility. So let's change it to 10. And you're going to notice that it filters that part out, as well as some other points here and here, which tells me that those areas are the worst 10% of points that it found on that selected surface. So. If you at any point you want to also change the scale, you can come down into error distribution here, change the values accordingly, and your color map will also update. The last thing here that I want to point out to you guys is the constraints menu. So this is what you can use to fully define the direction and alignment of your different entities. So for example, if I wanted to make sure that this calculated best fit plane is going to be perfectly lined up with the vertical axis, which is the Z axis of the coordinate system of this part, I can select the normal constraint, go into my derived entities and select the z-axis. And that immediately updates the color map to show me that once the plane fits to match this new constraint, it's showing me that there's a slight tilt based on the selected surfaces that I've created. So I can also uncheck that if I want to keep it local to that surface fitting. I can also select a perpendicular axis if I wanted to make sure that this was perpendicular to, let's say, the x-axis here, right? So those are the two different ways that you can constrain the calculation of your selected entity in terms of direction and alignment. So let's click OK there to create that plane. Once I create it, you'll notice it becomes green instead of yellow, and I can hover over it from the tree and see exactly which one it is. So let's go through another quick plane here. If I wanted to use the same parameters as I did before, you'll notice that it keeps the same filter, constraints, size of the plane, as well as the error distribution values. So if I wanted to make one at the top here, so let's select that. You'll notice it only grabs a little bit, so I can use the selection tolerance slider to grab as much of it as I can. Let's apply a little bit of a filter because I do see that there are some points there that might be skewing our data a bit, so 15%, let's say. And I'm going to hit OK, and that creates a second plane there. OK, so let's go through a couple other examples. Let's go through a 2D profile, like a slot. So if I wanted to come in and fit a slot inside here, there is one thing that I first need to define, and that's the case with all of these different 2D elements. That is something called a constraining plane. So the constraining plane is basically any plane entity that will define where this 2D profile is going to be projected and fixed onto. So if I want the calculated slot to be placed right at the edge of where this little protrusion ends, then I can create a plane here on the outside and use that as my constraining plane. 
So I actually already have one here, but if I didn't have one, I can go right into creating a new plane. That temporarily pops me into a plane creation menu. And then I can go in and use the fitting options with the selection tolerance. So I'm gonna make that a little bigger. And I can also click multiple times in different zones to add more and more points to this calculated plane. So let's bring this up. Okay, let's say that's good enough. So I'm gonna click okay, create that plane. And now I can select the inside of where that slot geometry is by control clicking on it. And now we can see the preview of the 2D slot that is being generated and projected onto this constraining plane number five. So this also shows me some different parameters that I can adjust. So remember the filter, let's set that to 10%, for example, that's gonna increase the amount of magenta colors I see there. If I wanted to change these constraints, if I wanted to control precisely this length to be exactly 28.5, the width to be 9.65. And also I can change even the center position of this slot here if I had a new point that I can change instead. So on top of that, we have entity details that just gives me a breakdown of some of the different values of dimensions and size of this part. And there's the same air distribution tab that I can use to adjust the color scale that I'm seeing here. So I'm gonna click okay to create that slot. There it is. Let's go in with a 3D element now. So let's say I wanna extract out a cone feature or a cylinder feature inside here. So let's go with a cylinder. I'm just gonna hide these planes just so they're not in the way. So while I have the cylinder selected, I'm gonna again use the fitting option, hold control, click inside and there's my selected area. Increase the selection tolerance to grab a little bit more. That looks good. And if I wanna set a constraint so that this center axis of the cylinder is going to be perfectly lined up with the, let's say one of the planes that I made earlier. So I'm gonna select the axis and show you guys what this looks like. So if I were to go in and select this plane one normal, you'll notice that it actually moves the preview of the cylinder physically from this fitted area here to now be perfectly aligned with where the normal vector of the plane is. So that's what axis controls. So we obviously don't want the cylinder to move from its original spot. We just want it to be in the same alignment. So I'm going to select orientation instead and do the same thing. Go to derived entities and select plane one. And now it keeps it in that same spot, but just slightly tilts it so that the center axis of the cylinder matches up with the direction of the normal vector of the plane. Let's change the diameter. I'm gonna make that a perfect seven. And I can also control the length of this by dragging these arrows or changing the length value here. I can also flip the normal direction of the calculated center axis vector. There we have the error distribution and entity details again. And finally, we now have these sections here where I can control the option to create a solid from this or a surface from it rather than just a standard cylinder entity. So if I create solid from this, you'll notice that it creates an actual solid block. If I just go back to that cylinder, right click, edit it. Let's use create surface instead. So now I'm gonna have a surface entity that is right there, which does not have a filled in result. So solids and surfaces, we can use them for a variety of different Boolean applications when modeling. So this is where using those options appropriately to help with the modeling process can be pretty helpful.